these rockets from Africa are here to show the world that it's not just about the flashy launches, but the brains behind the brawn. You're talking about the cutting edge tech that's making the rest of the world look like it's still stuck in the Stone Age. Buckle up space cadets. Let's get into this. This man from Zambia, who outdid himself and decided to make a rocket back in the 60s, said that he was going to be the first man on the moon. Mr. Enclosure, is this the site for your rocket launching program? And, and could you tell me where your rocket is? Yes, this is the rocket launching site and my rocket is just here. He had confidence in the idea that he could make it work. The man had 12 astronauts. And what is the name of your organization? Uh, the name of my organization is uh, National Academy of Science, Space Research and Ast Astronomical Research. He put them in an oil drum, spun them r around trees and rolled them down hills in order to prepare them for the weightlessness. He taught them to walk on their hands as he believed that this would be the way to walk in space. When will you fire off your first rocket and where will you send it to? I will, I will fight from Lusaka and uh, it will, if we go straight to the moon. He even made them swing on ropes before cutting the ropes and allowing them to experience a free fall. To most Zambians, these people are just a bunch of crackpots. And from what I have seen today, I am inclined to agree. People can laugh and consider them Stone Age if they want. But these guys had vision and a goal. And that's something that is not worthy. Plus lourde, plus haute, plus puissant. Après trois mois. In Congo, there was a rocket called the Troposphere 5. They made it to be a three-story rocket and five feet tall. That is the average height of a human adult, right? It's supposed to carry the Ndijwa satellite, which is supposed to take images of the Earth from 200 kilometers. Qui avant ce projet fou? Mont Le but atteindre une altitude. De but then you have to wonder how big or small is the satellite? Russia and the US have announced their surrender in this space race because I don't think they're going to beat this. Table feu d'artifice. But unfortunately, it didn't take off. It turned and moved horizontally and ended up blowing up. I guess Wakana technology wasn't still discovered back in those days when they were building this. Well, the guys who had built it decided not to give up and to make another one. And they decided to name it the Troposphere 6. So even if they are far from NASA's performance, they deserve respect. They built a rocket which looks like this. Well, I don't know if the world outside Africa has seen it, but in Africa, it's of course one of a kind. The rocket is to be carried to the water and be launched while still in water. More like how a submarine functions when it's about to throw a missile. I really don't know how they get it to be upright while in the water. And as you can see, probably they get something to hold it upright. They claim that the rocket is actually so powerful. It launches and moves some distance up in the sky before falling down. As an African, I cannot say that I've got hope that Africa will go on a space mission very soon. Well, if you previously watched the video of impossible African inventions, I know you're going to love this. It's an individual who built this rocket using a helicopter engine. Helicopters normally move horizontally when in the air, but this one moves in a vertical manner. Amazing and shocking that someone could ever think to that level, man. You can't call it a fail because it took off and was able to reach some good height in the air before crashing down to earth. It was a successful flight because nobody died at the end of the day. Good thing it had safety measures that made sure the pilot was safe and was just chilling on the streetlights in South Africa. 
This is what happens when you follow the exact drawing of a helicopter your son brought to you from school. It's scary because with his 50 IQ maximum, he's still considered the smartest guy in the whole village. Taking a look at this masterpiece, we go all the way back to Kenya, where we find this rocket made by students from one of the universities. Although it looks more like a projectile other than a rocket, it is said that they are soon working to create a liquid propellant one. Each of these rockets is better than the previous one, and that's progress. As you can see, the rockets can take flight to a height not further from the ground, but they are still going. Another scene in Nigeria, where the Nasrad built a very good rocket. And it took flight quite well, moving a considerable good amount of distance in air, as you can see. They've even attached some kind of parachute. Although the rocket is a laughing stock, we should give these guys their flowers because I wouldn't be able to do the same. He built the rocket out of different unconventional ways, making scrap metals and what some people might consider trash from scratch. Keyboard engineers might call these names, but at the end of the day, it's very ambitious. Kenya is making great strides in its space program. Although Kenya is a third world country, it laid down plans to build this rocket that will be the biggest ever in Africa. There was a time when global powers dominated the space race, leaving smaller nations to play catch up. And surprisingly, surely surprisingly, the fourth biggest in the world after countries like the United States, China and Russia. Five, four, three, two, one, ignition, engines full power, and lift off of Transporter 7, go. I know you're shocked as I am. This is a big deal to Africa and Kenya to be specific. It said that they can't pay bills on Earth, so they are escaping to space or something. Many of African inventions, even those steered by the government, still look like DIY projects, even though we expect them to be cutting-edge technology. But this is Africa. Click on the subscribe button for more amazing inventions from Africa. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.